Hello, writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Isan. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 73 of the podcast, and it's June 22nd, 2022. That's a lot of twos as we record this. (laughs) Yeah, that is. (laughs) Our main topic today is editing passes and AI software. Our podcast is sponsored by our patrons at patreon.com slash Valerie Isan, I-H-S-A-N. And our hosting is covered. I don't know if you knew this or not. Our hosting is covered by our patrons as of now. Thank you so much. uh, Yeah. So um, my next push goal is actually kind of personal (laughs) in Patreon. Um, If I can get like another $20 on the Patreon, then um, I can buy an extra tank of gas. (laughs) so that I can go see my dad who's mm-hmm. aging and needs extra help. And, you know, but gas where are you getting are gas crazy. for $20? No, 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 no. Like if I can, well, that's true. That wasn't old. That's like a fishbowl. gallon. That's, that was before the Ukraine thing happened. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, you're often, this isn't 1993 or whatever. Yeah. I love watching old movies when uh-huh. they drive past a gas station right. and you can see like, In in Die Hard, there's a gas station scene and gas is like 86 cents or something. And it makes me so mad to see that. (laughs) Last time I looked at a gas station placard or whatever, it was $5.55. I think you posted that. That was for regular too. It was $5.80 something for the premium. We just got a plug-in car and I am like maniacal about plugging that thing in. I calculate trips for like- That's exciting. I didn't know you had an electric car. It's 40, it gets 45 miles on a charge. And I'm just like, everything we do from now until sanity returns has to be within 45 miles. (laughs) (laughs) What happens if it's not? (laughs) I, we, we just do it and I don't sweat it, but it's, you know, it, do you it's like to all, stop at gas stations and plug it in. Are there places like that now? <laughs> stop at just random people's houses. Can we no, plug this no, in no. For 13 hours and get this thing full? <laughs> no, service stations. Oh, I guess we could. I, I, it's, it hasn't even been a month. I haven't put gas in in a month, which is what kind nice. of car is so, it? It's a Toyota RAV4. Oh, nice. That's they have exciting. a plug in. Is it a hybrid? Yeah. Yeah. So it like, it plugs in, it goes, it it goes until the battery dies. And then as soon as the battery dies, it kicks into gas. And then, but as soon as it kicks into gas, it starts charging the battery again. So you could theoretically drive for 45 miles, go to gas, charge it up over the next hundred miles, and then go back to, you could, it really, it it works. It works real well, but this isn't a car podcast, is it? No, it's not. (laughs) What are you reading? Let's let's, it's a book podcast. What are you reading? Uh, well, I look. I'll I'll admit it. I I went with the, with the siren song of the Multnomah County Library, and I was reading that book last week. I wasn't loving it. The the shadow of what was lost, and I picked up. This is my trashy reading. So I, I picked up a book, a sports book. It's about the Portland Trailblazers. It's just like a big book about basketball that I can <laughs> sit outside and read and occupy zero brain power. Um, it's been great. So I'm reading a book called, I think it's called Jailblazers or Bad Boys or something like that. It's, I don't know. It, again, it's the library. The library conspires to, to, you know, kind of blow up my TBR. I don't know if I'm going back to the shadow of what was lost. I just, the, the longer we've been apart, the more I see that book <laughs> for what it is. And the I, flaws, yeah. all the red flags. So I might not got to go break back, up we'll, with it. I may break up with it. Um, which I'll feel bad because it's like, it's nice and thick and it looks good on your shelf, but then I'd be, you know, I, we also got, just got a little library, you know, one of those little, Oh, in front of your house. We're going to, yeah, we're going to debut it this coming weekend. And that's exciting. that book might end up in the the little library. And I hope your own books will be there too. You know, I I kind of feel guilty, but like when I bought it for my wife for her birthday, I thought this would be a great way just to like. (laughs) get your books into the world yeah do it no one will know this is marketing fyi in the show notes when i put down what books we're reading i have big book about base basketball jail blazers or bad boy i don't know so please send me (laughs) the the title text it to me today and i'll put it actually in the show notes otherwise yeah no one's gonna know what book that is (laughs) i'm reading project hail mary it's been Uh, 
you know, I, it's been out for a long, long time. And I heard such rave reviews and I'm not a sci-fi reader, but mm-hmm. I heard that this was, you know, a riveting book. This, you know, even if you didn't read sci-fi and so far that's proved to be true. I'm quite a ways into it. It's a big book, but uh, I maybe Back there somewhere. Quarter, uh, maybe a quarter of the way in and it is really, it is riveting. I totally want to know what's going to happen. So that's what I mean. That's on my list. It's in in the stack somewhere. So you're saying it's quarter of the way in. You're still dancing with it. Yeah, yeah. And the quarter of the way in is a lot of pages because it's a big book. (laughs) Yeah. My mom got it from for me and she's like, This is a big book. You're gonna love it. Like that was the criteria for like whether or not I was gonna like a book. That's a great criteria, mom. Thanks. (laughs) My mom is the best book enabler in the world, mom. Mm -hmm just always she works at a used bookstore and you just give her titles or publishers I'll tell Mm -hmm. her like get anything with tour books on it and then like a week later I'll have like 50 tour titles in a in a shopping bag so she doesn't cook like she used to but she enables books (laughs) like like uh like no other so thanks mom all right so what is your process Eric when it comes to editing how many passes do you, what do you, what do you mean by editing passes? So are we talking about personal self-editing passes before I go to outside? Um, yeah. So for me, or both, it's, it's, it, you know, it's evolving. Process. It's an evolving process. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say that. Um, I think probably two years ago, I was less confident. And now I feel pretty confident that this is what I'll do. I, I have a, a writing group that I go, that I work with, and I've worked with them since 2000, 2020. So it's been two years. It doesn't sound like a long time, but I think at, at this amount of time, I know everybody offers me, like, as far as content goes, they all offer different insights. Like, and so it's, I, I look at that like my content edit pass. I send them you know, they're going through the book chronologically. They are, they are, they are giving me feedback on the criteria of, is this a satisfying read as a standalone? Is this a satisfying read in the series? So I feel confident that that's my content editing pass. Um, Can you describe that a little bit more? I mean, what is, do the, do you like meet weekly and go through five pages at a time or, you know, what is the, we that sounds five. like a long time to go through a book. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And that might be, you know, that might be the, the thorn in my side when it comes to this. So it's bi-weekly and it's 8,000 words every other week. So a 50, you know, 40,000, you know, 16 weeks, you can get to 40,000 words in a year. You could do 80, so 30. Yeah, so do the math. Like it, it. It's effective. So then they take the pass. We, you know, we all have a week to read the things and we, then we make comments and then we sit in a Zoom room like this and every, each, you know, each submission comes up, everybody comments on it for, for six minutes. And then the writer gets quite, you know, time to ask questions. Um, and so it, it is slow. You're, you're right. It is slow. And I, I also feel like it, because these these people have read now this is book number they're into book number three um which nobody else is at this point which makes me feel sort of like really trusting with them since Mm -hmm. i haven't really even talked about what i'm doing with the next book um i think if i were going on a new series i might go with a an outside person uh, um which i am debating doing kind of a side series within this series later this year um so yeah, that's Colin my first Sandor. pass. Pardon? Is it, what is his name? Sandor? Is that his name? The Call of Sandor? What, what's their, your person's name? The side character? Oh, Sandoval. Sandoval, not Sandor. The Call yeah, of Yeah, I have a book. Yeah, I have a Sandoval book. And then I've also kind of been thinking about doing like a, like a sort of something in the Paranormal Mystery series that's not this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if I were going to do that, I didn't. Look, the right the the rate that I write and I want to publish is going to test any editing, you know, process, and mm-hmm. I, and I'm willing to admit that. And so, it it will come down to a point where I think like I will have to have multiple avenues because my writing group will not move that fast. 
Mm -hmm. um, I can't ask them to do 16,000 words. I'm not special just because I feel like I'm special. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's my first pass. I mean, okay. that's, that's when I get, and I will go, so I will rewrite things and then I will go back with, if I rewrite something substantially or if it's a pivotal point, I will take those rewritten passages and I'll bring that to them and ask them to look, you know, so then that'll be my submission. So so are you bringing this, them rough drafts? Oh, right. So then I, so my normal writing process is I write by law, I write longhand and then I will type. And then I usually go back and do just like a, 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 a like a, I don't call it a polish, but just like, I'll go back and I'll add so more straighten. detail. <laughs> You're yeah, straightening. Straight. <laughs> yeah. Like right now I'm doing like, a, I'm working on something and it, I wrote the first thousand words. And then I had to go back and you know rewrite those words, and I got to about fifteen hundred because I added more color, right? I left mm -hmm. out the temperature, I left out the yeah, you know, I, the adjectives. Like so you know, I left. Out and then you that. give that to that draft to your critique group. Yeah, and then they'll and go then through, you, and, they and then you edit it at that point, or do you just like save it and set it aside so that you can keep the same? Now. I am right. That's a great question because before I was writing way ahead of what they were editing because they were moving slower than I was mm -hmm. writing. Um, so I would have to sort of re get re refreshed with the, with the submission, submit it, and then decide if I needed to work on it right then, or if I could just put that into the next big pass. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah, right. totally. Um, now with, with funeral shadow, I am, I am trying to keep up with the pace of the group because I feel like it'll be more because sometimes I'll go back and look at the notes and I'll say, Ooh, what does that mean? Or, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to ask people to go back and like, what, right. remember, <laughs> remember in January when you said this about this moment, <laughs> what did you really mean? So I feel like I need to be a little more on with them. Um, so I'm going to try with this book to be more on with, with what they're, Looking. Does that mean you're going to have to slow down your pace? I'm well. It, what it means is that I'm going to be writing like a lot of associated content around mm -hmm. the novels. I think I talked about this in the yeah. previous. I'm going to be doing like a short story or a novella, like kind of bookending each book. Um, I think I'm just going to have to be writing other things and mm -hmm. then taking those other things elsewhere, mm -hmm. uh, so that I'm able to. It's just gonna. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know about this is a hard okay. question for so me. So it so you're in transition then. I think so like. because yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm always writing I probably put down like 15,000 words a week and if I'm only editing 8. Yeah. That's hard. So your editing yeah. passes are you you write this stuff, you go through it once and straighten it, then you send it to your critique group. Yeah. And and so and far, I'm, you've just set it aside and just brought them the next one. But now you're trying to kind of like make their changes up. as as they're giving as them they to come. you. Okay. Yeah. Which was summer was a bad time to to do that because you know Gary, who's in the in critique mm. group, Gary. Um, <laughs> you got to get that T-shirt. Yeah, I, I swear I'm gonna wear it and one of I'll be this will like, be my hey. this will be our drinking game. <laughs> critique, critique group. Critique group Gary travels a lot, and one of the other members has moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, so now we're all in Oregon, which is fantastic. But that just those interruptions, you know, we're mm -hmm. not going to get our regular every two week thing. So, yeah, I don't know. I think this this is an on this will be an ongoing. When we talk about mastermind conversation or, or processes that we do, this would be one for. I am really trying to get to the bottom of how am I going to write at the pace I'm writing and make all of this work. Um, I just work. had a fabulous idea right here on the podcast. I'm just going to say it. We haven't talked about this at all, but um, I do book coaching and business coaching. So why don't one of our episodes be an hour long oh, session? This. I'll just give you a session and we can go through whatever it is that you're needing, you know, assistance on. Like, it sounds like this is something that you would bring this would you be, know this would be fun but i have to I, I, for this episode i'll have to be on a couch 
you know, like in the, <laughs> like it's a scene in a movie where I'm like, you're the shrink and I'm on the couch and I'm, cause there's going to be, be a lot of our YouTube here. watchers <laughs> it will matter to the podcast. <laughs> this will, yeah. So this drives me to distraction all the time. Like, how do I, how do I make, you know, how do I make this, how do I make the passes fit? Okay. The, the content so- part of it. Okay. So then once it, once it's done with the content part and you feel like, okay, this is a book (laughs) from beginning to end, what do you do with it then? Pass it off to a line editor because I pass it off Okay, and be done with it. And then after the line editing, you make the changes, make the changes. Then I would go back and I don't, I don't get a proofreader. Actually, I, I do. I have like five to 10 beta readers on everything okay. um, that I, through my mailing list and two or three of those people are basically proofreaders. Cool. Um, so they will, they'll find any, they'll knit any pick or pick mm-hmm. any knit, pick any knit <laughs> um, that I ask them to. And well, I don't even have to ask. They just do it naturally. And there's always three, right? We've talked about this. Every self-published book, as soon as you open it up, it's like, yep. oh, that's not the right there. Um, that's not there, there. Uh, so they pick those up and then we're off to the races. Right on. So mine is oh yeah, slightly different because I no longer use the critique group because I hit that same wall where I didn't want to be bringing rough draft stuff to my critique group. It was messing with my writing process because I can't have the editor brain on while I'm making new words. Right. So I will draft it, straighten it, <laughs> make sure that, you know, all of the insert something here is filled in, you know, <laughs> I always, that, that is something I always do when I put it in develop. I always search for the word insert because <laughs> <laughs> inevitably, <laughs> inevitably one gets through. So when you say, well, I'm going to slow you. So you said draft. Mm-hmm. So take me through a little bit of that. When you, how do you do that? Like you sit down and you just write your organic thousand words. Let's just do that. How does that? Well, I plot it out first. So I pull up the Scrivener document and, okay, this is the scene where I'm writing blah, blah, blah. So I'll write that scene. Yeah. So I, right now, oh, I guess I'm stepping ahead. Yeah. So yeah, I just draft. I just write. It's just all, I write straight through as much as I can, you know, and that depending on what's happening in my world can take two months or, you know, 12 months. (laughs) (laughs) Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'll just draft it all out. And that's all I'm doing is just making new words and, and making the book. And then after that, I print it off. So I have it on paper, double spaced, and I go at it with markers, you know, 12, 12 point font. Yep. I just okay. write it out. And then I, um, yeah, I make all my notes on, on the hard copy. And then I put those changes into Scrivener and straighten. And then pretty much at that point I go through, I just got this book yesterday. I've been waiting impatiently for it. It's the workbook for the writing scene oh, book that Jay did. And so it's a great cover. I am going to I love it. It's all full of, um, uh, not templates. What do you call these? Like ta- like work exercises and stuff. Yeah. But they're all the same. So you, you go through every single scene in your book. And in three sentences or less, what's happening in this scene? Why is this scene important? What are you trying to say about the world or about this life? How do you want the reader to feel when they read this scene? What's wrong with the protagonist's world? Mm-hmm. And you go through like the character voice and, and then do that um, conflict choice consequence that we talked about last week for right. every scene. So that is... I guess I do that globally first, but that's sort of part of my plotting process. So now I'm in revision and I go through the scenes, make sure um, I have the conflict choice and consequence for each scene or, or chapter, depending on how that book, you know, worked its way out. And then I have to do a settings pass because I don't actually, sometimes I do that first. So these, these kind of go in, in different orders based on the individual book. Like it's just different with every book. Um, You probably have a different feeling for what you missed in every manuscript, right? Yeah. 
So after, yeah, so after I've got the draft and I've straightened it and made my initial one pass through, and then I do the, um, you know, the, the workbook, the three C's for the, for the three acts and globally, and then I go through, uh, make sure there's setting in it and senses and the theme too, mm-hmm. making sure that story hypothesis is working its way out in the book. And then I go through and do the, the three C's for each scene or chapter which is what I'm going to do right now in my memoir revision. And then after that's all done, then I'll run it through a pro writing aid, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then I send it to the line editor and then make the changes like you. And then, um, and then I will do another pro writing aid pass, which is my proofreader. Okay. So you're counting on the AI software to do that. Yeah. So uh, um, it's, else, it's been through the line editor too, though. Right. right. So it's not just me. I do personally one, two, at least three passes for various reasons. Um, more depending on, like you said, what's wrong with the book the as, feel, as yeah. I'm writing it, the feel of it. And then I send it to a professional. I'm a professional, but I can't see all of my errors. You know, you I'm too close to it. So I get somebody else. Oh, I forgot one whole step. Oh my God. When I'm drafting, after I'm done drafting and I made my straightening and I go through the three C's and and all of that, I send it to, I get the story diagnostic, what I did for you on that last book. Oh yeah. So I have that content developmental assessment and then I make those, then I revise at that point, because there's probably like actual rewriting that needs to be done at that point. Right. And then, then I go through the, the scene, the three C's per scene and add in, you know, anything that's missing and make those changes, add more setting, whatever it is that I need. And then I send it to the line editor. So I do two professional editing passes mm-hmm. in addition to maybe three of my own personal. And then I use the pro writing aid to catch any passive voice or grammatical errors or word choice thing or whatever, you know. Before we jump into AI editors, I should add that I do, I forgot this complete, this thing that I always do is I do a time pass. Mm -hmm. Does the time in the story make sense? Because I am- am... really messed up with that right now. (laughs) Oh, it's it's so hard. It's in a book, in a series. I mean, unless it's a short story, which I think that's the joy of a short story. It's just gonna like, it's. The timeline is you can't I, I don't know how you could struggle with a timeline in a short story but with a novel that's fitting into a jigsaw puzzle did i cite the, the right start date end date did he say something did in if he's referring to something that happened in the last book did he say a year ago when it was three months ago i have to make sure that all those timelines pass and then also i do what with I call, your you also have um different timelines within the book too you do a lot yeah and the this next one, I'm not doing any, I'm I'm doing no flashbacks. I'm doing (laughs) no flashbacks for you (laughs) inserted stories because I just, well, it's, it's funny because Gary, (laughs) I'm going to have a drink every time I say Gary, (laughs) Gary, Gary says like, you know, the first two books had like wonky timelines and they work, but he said, you might like on your third book, just try to do like a linear story where everything happens within the story. And I think that's like, he read my mind because I needed that. (laughs) But I also do I also do like a names pass and mm. like a place names pass and a mm-hmm. lore pass just to make sure that I'm developing that like that everything builds on the lore before I don't want to I want to make sure that I, if it was you know if it was up to up to five I don't know if it was like a lore five and book that one book that it's a lore six that it's moving things forward that you're not getting the same stuff so that the cult you know things are changing so I yeah. do that too but let's talk about I'm... the I, oh go ahead that with the memoir that I'm doing, because yeah. I'm compressing time and moving things around so that the literary arc is there, that right. means that scenes that I've written about winter and scenes that I've written about <laughs> summer are right next to each other. And so right. I have to, yesterday when I was working on the book, I was like, oh man, I'm going to have to like, I don't even know how to like look for that anymore. I think I might have to like print it all out again, just so I can see it a little bit better. I don't know, but that's what I'm so struggling saying with right that- now the storyline pass is messing up messes up the chronology pass like the logic pass the story logic pass yes yeah so my god i pull my hair out 
<laughs> I would. That would be really challenging. Well, it's a it's a unique quirk of memoir writing. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm working on one for a client right now. And it's like there's so many things where, you know, something three things are happening at once. But, you know, if you're telling this part of the story and then now you've got to take one of those layers out and move it over here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, and it's hard yeah, when you're the person that lived it to look at that and say, hey, these things all happen at the same time. Why are they in different chapters? It's yeah. Well, even me, I was under, I understand that. And I was doing it on purpose. And then even yesterday I was starting to move Perfect. scenes around and scribble like, oh no, no, this happened when I was, and then I had to stop myself. No, I put it here on, <laughs> it's supposed right. to be here for the story purposes. Right. Right. And that ultimately is what rules, right? Yeah. It's all about the story. So what AI software do you use? Anything? I don't and I'm but I this is where I'm glad we're going to go with this because I'm considering it. I mean I I get the pro I get the offers from both Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid and all those things like 10% off or lifetime. So I don't I think what I my my inhibition around those is that the little squigglies and all that stuff are very interruptive to me. Like I try to tune all that stuff out. You mean and, when you're drafting? Yeah. And so I know you can, I know that it's all like, but I don't know, I guess I don't know how reliable those things are. Like what, talk to me about how you use them effectively, how you use them, particularly with voice, right? Because I feel like some of that stuff can be really restrictive on. Well, in pro writing aid, you can choose which, um, if it's general nonfiction, if it's fantasy, if it's mystery, you know. It, it, so how it, would it do that different? Like how would it treat general nonfiction versus fantasy, which are because the AI knows like there's some algorithm or something that knows what kind of language, what what words are used, what sentence structure is, you know, like if you're writing an academic paper, it's gonna have a different sentence structure than if you're writing, you know, a contemporary romance. The sentences are gonna would, be longer, right. they're gonna, you know more passive voice might be allowed because academic writing tends to be a little bit more like that. And yeah, so it, it that's the AI part. <laughs> it and knows. So it, would, it would know weird words, right? If you're doing fantasy, it's you're going to have made up. Yeah. So words. it pulls up. So yeah, it, you, in, you have a, um, so it integrates with Scrivener, which I love because I use Scrivener. There's also right. an add-on for Word, which I use for my editing clients too, because I, you know, do my own pass and then I plug it into to Pro Writing Aid just to make sure, you know, it picked up stuff that I missed. So I go through my client work twice and, and it will show you if a, if a word doesn't make sense, like a fantasy name or something like that, you could add it right. to the dictionary. So then it will remember right. that and you won't have to like, no, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Yes, that's right. I want to say that I want, you don't, it won't keep doing that for you. You can ignore something if it pops up and says, la, 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 this is not right. And you say, nope, this is what I wanted to say. You can just ignore that. So it just highlights, it just scans the whole document, picks out all the, you know, alarm <laughs> words or passive voice or right. whatever it is that it's picking up. And then you go through them systematically and either ignore them or change them or add them to the dictionary. So it, it learns as you're working on the document. Mm -hmm. So that is how I use pro writing aid. If anyone is listening and not watching that, I just gave the, that look of to the sky was like, I should buy that because that, <laughs> and I have I think what I, a discount code. <laughs> the link is in the show notes. We did not rehearse that anyway, I promise. I Well, that's, look, I think my aversion to the any of that AI editing stuff is that word, the word dictionary, which we all grew up on, or, you know, we, we used the squigglies, right? I brought up mm -hmm. the red and blue squigglies. They are so unreliable, right? It's like, if you have any character that's speaking with any sort of, I always think of Hagrid from, from uh, mm -hmm. Harry Potter, like Hagrid, if you, if you were just to go on a grant, like Hagrid's you have to, it's hard to read out loud because mm -hmm. it like it, you, you have to like look at it and go, what is he trying to say here? And how do yeah. I put, put, put this in the brogue? Um, so that would drive me nuts because it would like, it's going to find all oh, that's going to be wrong. So if you could tune that out and just say, leave this, leave dialogue alone or something, which is why it's what I like about 
um, Final Draft, the you can. screenwriting software, is you can tell it, don't look for anything in dialogue. So you can change it in Pro Writing Aid. I don't know about the other ones, but in Pro Writing Aid, you can um, ask it to look for um, grammar and punctuation, or you can ask it to look for passive voice, sentence structure. You know, there's like, I think there's four different they're all color coded too. Like there's the red right. dot and the blue dot and the you know right, pink right. dot. They all mean different things. And so I usually just pull them all up. But sometimes right. after I've done one pass and I feel confident in the the amount of passive voice I've left in, you know, I just want to check one more time for the typos. I'll just ask it to do that. So it's not pulling up, you know, more stuff because it's just more time consuming to go through all of the all the pull up stuff. But uh, we are out of time. We are it's, there. Yeah, there are other AI softwares. It's not all about pro writing aid, guys. There is Grammarly. You brought that up. There is AutoCrit. Um, those are the three main ones that I hear floating around in the writing industry. Either those are the three I've heard. Yeah. yeah. Um, there obviously are more, will be more. <laughs> um, and they all have like trials too. So you could. You could go try pro, pro writing aid and for their like 14 day trial or 30 day trial. I forget how long it is and just, you know, plug a couple of your short stories in and see if it would drive you crazy, but it's not going to have the red squigglies because it doesn't mm -hmm. activate until you turn it on. Right. So it doesn't interfere with your um, drafting. And if anybody out there has a, you know, a, a process that they use, like you know, mm -hmm. Val prints something out and does it on by hand. I don't, there's some difference there. Like, what do you do? Is there anything you add to that mix of, you know, from, from draft to publish? We'd love to know. Right on. Okay. Happy writing everybody. And we'll see you next time. Happy writing. Yeah. Bye-bye.